So here we're going to talk about dipole moments. Now dipole moments come about from our molecular geometry. We talked about how we draw Lewis structures and Lewis structures based on where the locations of the electrons and such are allow us to determine our electron domain geometry. Based on our electron domain geometry we can make estimations as to what the bond angles will be and then from our electron domain geometry, based on groups of electrons and bonds and lone pairs and such, we can determine our molecular geometry. So now we're going to talk about how molecular geometry allows us to determine overall dipole moments. So we'll first just define what a dipole moment is. We, we refer, we've used the phrase dipole moment as a word to describe bond polarity. It's the magnitude of a bond polarity. But we also have an overall dipole moment, or sometimes referred to as a resultant dipole moment, which is the three-dimensional addition of bond polarities giving rise to an overall polarity, or lack thereof. Put another way, bond overall dipole moments is simply a molecular addition of all those bond polarities and sort of a, a longer distance influence. So if we're looking at a molecule in, instead of looking at an individual bond, so here is a water molecule, and we know that there's a lone pair here and a lone pair here, and that water has an electron domain geometry of tetrahedral and a molecular geometry of bent. So now what we're going to do is just look at the bond dipoles, and since we're looking at bond polarities, we sort of ignore the lone pairs in our discussion. So if we draw a bond, polar a bond polarity in the hydrogen and oxygen, we know oxygen is more electronegative, so there's a polar bond, and we sort of draw it in the direction of the oxygen with a little crosshair showing the positive end. And the other hydrogen has a positive end with a negative arrow pointing towards the oxygen. So if we were to sort of take the vector additions, if you will, we have sort of this influence on this side going up and to the right. We have this influence on this side going up and to the left. And the magnitude of sort of the inner direction on this polarity and the magnitude of the inner direction on this polarity sort of cancel each other out. But there is a net sort of push in the up direction, if you will. And these two bond polarities are in the plane. And so our overall dipole moment, if you will, is going up straight in the plane, just like the, the individual bond dipoles, straight up through the oxygen. So because of the orientation of water, the hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen being the angle that it is, those bond dipoles don't cancel each other out. They actually add together to give a net push sort of in this direction. For the purposes of this course, I just want you to recognize is there or is there not an overall dipole moment? I'm not going to ask you about relative magnitudes. I'm not going to ask you what direction those overall dipole moments are. My only concern is that you understand yes or no, is there a dipole moment? So let us consider carbon dioxide. In carbon dioxide, we have um, two double bonds and there are two groups of electrons around the carbon, and so it is a linear molecular geometry, bond angle of exactly 180 degrees. We have bond dipoles because carbon and oxygen have different electronegativities. So there's a bond dipole going in this direction, the oxygen pointing towards the oxygen with positive charge inserting near the carbon. And we have a bond dipole over here going in the direction of this oxygen. Now, we know that the bond angle is 180 degrees based on molecular geometry via CPR theory. And we know the magnitude of these polarities is exactly the same. The reason we know they're exactly the same is because in both cases it's an oxygen fighting with a carbon. An oxygen fighting with a carbon. Exactly the same difference in electronegativity. So the magnitude of these polarities is exactly the same. And because they're 180 degrees, they cancel each other out. And since they cancel each other out, there is no overall dipole moment. So there's no overall dipole. We do have bond dipoles, but there's no overall dipole moment. If we just tweak this molecule ever so slightly, and the only thing we're going to do is change the oxygen, one of the oxygens into a sulfur, now we still have the exact same structure in that we have a molecular geometry of linear, and we have bond dipoles, but now because one bond dipole is a carbon fighting with an oxygen, and the other bond dipole is a carbon fighting with a sulfur, their magnitudes are not the same. The direction is can't they cancel each other out. The 
in direction simply because they're 180 degrees to each other, but they're not the same magnitude. How do we know they're not the same magnitude? Because sulfur is not the same as oxygen. So while they are, it's a tug of war, 180 degrees, they are not evenly matched. And so in this case, the bond dipoles do not completely or perfectly cancel each other out like they do in carbon dioxide. And so OCS actually has an overall dipole moment. Now granted, it is small but it has an overall dipole moment. So another molecule coming up, we'll see a positive end and a negative end. Whereas in carbon dioxide, there is no positive end. There is no negative end.